Well, it is a real treat. In the studio with us is Jason Winyard. And, you know, we we're just talking before, mate. So it's been, we've been chatting to each other for the best part of a couple of decades now, haven't we? <laughs> yeah, it's been a bit like that for me. I'm a bit of a fossil in, in wood chopping and uh, timber sports. And, um, yeah, you know, great to great to talk with you here again. Yeah, so you're off to the World Champs, and that's at the end of October, 28th of October, Gothenburg, Sweden. So where have you been and what have you been doing up until then? What's the last time when you had the axe on? Um, the last competition I went to was the Sydney Royal Easter Show back in April and um, had some pretty good results there. I caught COVID right before oh. and uh, I was lucky to get on the plane. Um, just, just got sort of tested negative before I got on the plane. So that wasn't ideal lead up to, to that competition. But um, yeah, so that was the last time I had um, an event and then just been prepping for this world championship in Sweden. So we had our national still timber sports championships in March and um, I took that out. So that meant I get to represent New Zealand in the individual still timber sports world championship. Yep. So um, yeah, everything's been kind of building up for this um, major event in in October, 28th of October in Gothenburg, Sweden. And uh, really looking forward to it. It's been, um, it's been a pretty tough couple of years and, uh, Really happy and grateful to be able to get back with the axe and saw and and uh, see see how good I am. So has COVID kind of curtailed you know the sport as much as it has everything else? Has it? It really has. Um, we had the first world championship in still timber sports last year, but it was limited to European competitors. European and I think a US contingent was over there as well, but uh, they didn't have the team event, and they haven't had the world championship since twenty. 19 i believe so yeah it's been a it's been a pretty tough time for the sport um it kind of coincided with some injury issues that i had i had a hip replacement in 2020 what from uh arthritis arthritis um, arthritis you young to have arthritis yeah it's um i don't know what caused it and i guess no one really knows but um i guess it's the heavy lifting that i've put in like getting training blocks and that sort of stuff since sort of 12 years old. So I think I'm kind of paying the price for that sort of carry on. As opposed to the action? Well, I, I don't, I can't say for sure, but um, the wood chopping action, if, if performed correctly, is it's not really hard on your body. It's all the getting the training wood and working on the farm with dad at a young age, you know, chucking hay bales around and lifting silly things that like, grown men couldn't lift it at sort of 12 to 16 years old. I think I'm paying the price for, for that sort of carry on. But hey, it's life. Um, I wouldn't change a thing looking back. And uh, I'm, I'm glad I've come through it to, you know, to the stage I am now and uh, really grateful to be able to compete at, at a high level. Um, I'm 49 this year, so You're not. I'll be one Look, of the he's oldest. 40. Look at him, he's 49, mate. I was going to say, I thought you were about 35 or 36. <laughs> I'll be one of the oldest competitors at the Steel Timber Sports. World champs, yeah. And there's uh, so a team thing as well, isn't there? There so is. Yeah. So yeah. who else is going for New Zealand? So we've got um, Adam Lowe, Shane Jordan, Jack Jordan, um, myself, Nathan McDonald, and also we're taking um, the late David Bolstad's son. Uh, he was our uh, rookie representative. So um, his name's Morgan Bolstad. So, uh, this goes back to Sonny would be the grandfather, was he? Yep. Oh, what exactly. a legacy, mate, that is, yeah. isn't it? It's pretty pretty That's cool, cool to be mate. able to take him with us and have him gain experience and, and help him on his um, on his journey. So, What about the women, mate? Do, we, do many women do this, play this, go to the world champs? Yeah. They, what about they, New Zealand women that do it? Yeah. We did have a women's competition, and we have for the last three years, and um, but not yet. At world championship level, okay. I think it's coming. It's coming pretty quickly because yep. most of the countries have a national championship for for the women. All of the countries, so so it's a it's a great thing, and and the girls are really um, they are really skilled at um, and do it and doing the different disciplines. So I think they're going to get a, a good following, much like um, you know the ladies rugby. Yeah, yeah, it's all building, mate. Here. That's a, you know, and this is you know, I know that you know every everyone wants it to happen today, but. You got to be a little bit patient with it. The moment that you, you know, I was talking about this yesterday. The moment that you start yelling and telling people what to do and what to watch, they're going to balk. We're all adults. We all behave like children at that yeah, stage. Sure. Don't tell me what to do. 
but you've got to get a good product. You put the product out there. Jason Winyard is with us on the platform. I remember, you know, when we first spoke, and it would have been in the late 90s when Radio Sports started, and yeah. you were on the American circuit then, mate, and you were winning a truck every every time. That's what fascinated me. Like, you must have had eight of them, and you might have had to build the biggest garage in New Zealand for them. <laughs> yeah, I won 10 trucks 10 in, in trucks. my stint. Yeah. And these aren't, these aren't, I'm talking people, these are those big American Texas ones with 19 wheels and stuff, right? Oh, yeah, the last couple were Dodge Rams, so I, I bought three Dodge Rams home, kept kept one of them. I still drive one of them, and uh, no, it was a it was a great time in my career. Um, it was some of the best competition ever assembled um, over in the USA because it was an open competition. So we got the best from Australia, the best from New Zealand, the best from Canada. And you were dominating, and the best mate. From USA, you were winning yeah, these New things. Zealand, New Zealand dominated for quite a few years. Uh, David Bolstad won five of the competitions there and I won 10 so there you go um in that stint from 96 yeah 97 to 2012 so. do you get better at it Jason it's I mean your technique must thing, be eh? but it must get better right eh? well you you, you kind of want to hope so but technique is something it's a constant work on you know like I think you well I look at things and you think oh maybe I could have done this or that better and and it's always that way with wood chopping you you kind of always trying to perfect what you're doing because like I don't people probably don't appreciate the accuracy involved and and how critical it is to use your body correctly there's so many things that have to come together to have a, a top level performance it's it's a constant thing that you're just working on all the time and, and that's aside from just getting your body in good physical shape to be able to compete there, there's so many things so many aspects to the sport that the person looking from outside doesn't really recognise. They only see us swinging big axes and taking big chunks of wood oh, yeah. out of the out of the. And log. doing it at a ferocious pace. Yeah, and and that's the thing. All this has to combine and and happen really really quickly. It's like all sports, mate. Yep. Don't it? You know, it it's, it's mental. It it's physical. It's your technique. It's everything. Who sharpens the blades for you? Do you do you still do that yourself? I do a little bit of it myself. You, you kind of have to, but um, we have one of the best makers of. Um, axes and saws in New Zealand and Masterton, Tuatahi axes. And they've been going for about 40 years, I believe. So they've developed their product to a level where they're the best in the world. Wow. So, so we're really lucky to have Tuatahi, that. Tuatahi axes. Yeah, that's right. And what metals are they using? Are they still using basic steel or do they use compounds now? No, they've they've experimented with different types of steel, but the, it's basically high carbon tool steel, which is really, really good quality and only available um from certain places in the world. So they import the steel and they forge it in-house and then they heat treat um, and temper it in-house and then also grind um, the axes in-house in as well. So it's a pretty amazing little company in Masterton. Mate, look, I look at it like a golfer with a golf club, a, a guy with a, a girl with a tennis racket. You know that it's like a glove. It fits in there and you know when you pick it up exactly. Well, you, I mean, you, you tell us. You know exactly what it feels like, don't you? you definitely. There's so, it's so much to the equipment. Um, when you think of the forces that are going on to the blade, you remember these blades are razor sharp. That you know they they come to a a razor edge at fourteen degrees. They weigh roughly three kilos. The axe head itself, and you're putting all your force onto this blade and and you know pushing it into a log. And the forces on that blade are incredible, and, the, and the, it's so thin. And I'd love to watch it in slow motion, mate. I yeah. bet you'd see some great. You'd see some great physics going on here. Has anyone well, actually broken it down? The science of it, like that? I don't think they too many do. efforts have been made on on in that respect. Because I think you'd see a lot of things going on if you, if yeah, you yeah, really yeah. took a high speed camera. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it'd be amazing. We can only surmise what's happening from sometimes the damage that that happens to the blade. Yeah, but. Any imperfection in that log, when that blade's travelling through the through the wood fibres, and it'll just break a big hunk out of the blade because right. they're, they're really hardened to a point where they'll hold an edge, but that also makes them slightly brittle. So they won't they'll resist flexing, but if there's an imperfection in that log when it's travelling through there at such a speed, it, it'll break a whole piece out of that blade. So Gothenburg, Sweden, at the end of October. Uh, and and how is funding and things? Do you get any help from Sport New Zealand? Do you get any help from? Not really, um, oh. unfortunately. But still, New Zealanders. Um, yeah, they're great supporters. They have yep. been for well, as you say, decades now, haven't they? Yeah, and they fund the New Zealand team going over there. They 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 you know pay for our flights and everything. So 
really fortunate to I had been sponsored by Stool New Zealand since 2006 and they're a great company I also work for them at, um, in, in a technician role so I've done that since 2012 and uh, great company great that they're behind the sport here in New Zealand and uh, we wouldn't be able to do these things without the, the backing. Of what chance we got to bring those medals back, mate? Pretty good. Yep, um, we're all on the same page that we want double gold going over there. So um, the team has been training really hard. We've got a great, talented team, and uh, I believe I can bring back this individual world championship as well. So uh, it's it's all my whole season's been geared towards um, peaking at this event in Gothenburg. So really Look, looking forward to we're it. We're so happy to give you whatever support we can. How do people how do people follow you? How do how do they watch this? It's uh it's getting a good push on social media with uh, Instagram. Still's putting a lot of stuff out there on Instagram. Facebook will be live streaming the event, I believe. So um, our people at Still Marketing will be um, making that available. And that's S-T-I-H-L, people. Yep, okay. Right. So you just jump on there and you'll be able to uh, and follow Jason and the team's progress. It'll even be on YouTube. Like if you search Still Timber Sports World Championship on YouTube, it'll come up. Yep. Uh, all the other countries have had a live stream um, on YouTube as well. So awesome. pretty easy to find. Awesome. Good luck, bro. Thanks very much, Martin. Great talking with you.